Acetone serum, we've got four LFOs. And unlike the envelopes, none of them are primarily linked to anything all the time by default. What an LFO is, is a low frequency oscillator. It allows us to effectively send a signal to move something at different increments in time. And we can choose the shape by which it does that as well. So to demonstrate this, we're going to select LFO1, and I'll link that to the cutoff control of the filter. Now when we press a note, we can see that this triangle shape open and closes the filter. It does this currently linked to a rate of a BPM, which is based on the DAW. If we were to turn this BPM indicator off, it switches to Hertz. Zero Hertz will give us no movement. We can go from an incredibly low 0.01 Hertz per second. One Hertz, for example, would be one cycle per second. You can work out what you need based in Hertz, but in most cases, it's far more sensible to have BPM and have it linked to the BPM of your track. At which point we get increments of time such as two bar, one bar, half, quarter notes. Much like the ADSR, we can create our own LFO shapes in here, or using the folder icon here, we can load shapes that are ready made. For example, a sine wave. But because these are adjustable shapes with double click, we can completely control them and make our own unique LFO shapes. The grid gives us our overall editing size. So at the minute we've got a grid of eight, if we were to go to, say, a grid in 16s, this is going to help us define a lot more where we want those particular notes and things to lie. I can write a pattern for 16s much more simply. We've then got mode, trigger, envelope, and off. Trigger will re-trigger the LFO every time you press a new note. Whereas off would continue the LFO running. Envelope has it perform a little more like an envelope style. It really depends on what you need and what you would like the patch to perform like. Looking back where we chose BPM before, we've got ANCH underneath. This is an anchor point. Essentially what this means is whether or not the LFO will always be synced to the same point based on the track. Uh, again, it ties in heavily to the BPM and how your track plays as a whole. It can be very useful for keeping lots of different synths performing in exactly the same time. And it's useful most of the time when it's switched on. Trip and dot refers to the rate types being in either triplet or dotted. And you can have a look at your quantize settings in your DAW for examples of triplets and dotted. So we had a look at the rate control already. If we have a look at rise, what rise does is gently introduce the LFO. This can be useful much like the warp factors where it introduces them together to avoid clicks and pops of sudden drastic changes. Having a short amount of rise can help bring something in a little bit more subtly. It's also really useful for building risers very, very easily. Delay, as you would imagine, does almost the same thing, but it has a delay before the LFO will actually start. And smoothing smoothens out these points. So for example, I've got this very harsh uh, change here that can cause clicks and pops. Smoothing would smooth that out ever so slightly for us. So 
So now we know how to set up LFOs and how to link them to parameters. In the last section, we're just going to look at the mod matrix where we can basically set up macros for multiple controls via a single control.